In today's video, we're going to work with layered image effects. So what we're going to do is go with something a bit like the Burger King campaigns where they've got titles in behind a main image. So in that case, one of the hamburgers and they've got Burger King then written in different colors behind that creates a collage type of effect that we're going to mimic in Squarespace. We're not just going to use Squarespace. We'll use Canva and the image background remover for the graphic. And I can show you two ways of doing this. One where we create the layered image in Canva and flatten it down and then upload it as just one background image. But I'll also show another way where we can use the layers in Squarespace, a new feature or relatively new feature with Fluid Engine and show how we can use the text for one layer and then a cutout image over top of that. I think we know what our challenge is now. Let's crack on. Okay, so it's taken a bit of time to find an example in terms of what I found earlier and what I mean by this effect. And I had a look through and I couldn't find anything straight away. And this is probably the best one I could find where we've got the image with a cutout effect and then the text going behind it. Well, we can recreate this type of effect in Squarespace. We just realized that the fonts probably aren't going to be very suitable for it on this site that I was going to use initially. So let's switch it up and go for a different image. So what we're going to do is go with a mouse, as in computer mouse. Then we're going to use this font, which is our custom font, as the backdrop behind it. And we're going to use it within Squarespace so we get a faster loading image. We're going to save it as a transparent PNG file. And hopefully that will work. So let's go into our test page that we've got here that we just play around with. And we're going to come back to this once we've finished in Canva. So I've created just a presentation design, which is 16 by nine, and that will be absolutely fine for what we're looking for. And now I'm going to go to element and I'm going to search and we're going to go for photos for a computer mouse. Don't know why I'm being overly fussy on the selection of the mouse. In fact, let's go to the top and pick one that's on a good angle. And now we can go to the background remover and make this nice and big because we're going to cut the background out. So that's going to be uh, image one, which is if I change the background color, we can see that it's working really nicely on that already. Now let's go and add a second page, actually create this background effect. So in fact, this is the one we're going to edit and I'm going to leave the transparent image on the second one and we're going to create the effect here. I was thinking of going and picking actually a campaign heading or something like that for this, but I think we're just going to keep it really boring and simple. Let's go for a smaller font size, go for say 120, align it to the left. Right, I've got some options here. I could just copy this, obviously, and just repaste it. Okay. So I think I'm going to reduce the font size. And the fact that we're going to create in Squarespace is going to be with a much bigger type with the text overlaying it. Because I could go with the effect with just having three lines, but I'm just wondering if we can just get it to reduce. So we can have multiple... Pixel Hayes Academy titles on each row. And it's kind of almost like wrapping paper effect. And let's also reduce the line height. Okay, so we're going to go with that. And now I'm going to select all, copy, add an extra space and then paste it in, add an extra space and paste it in again. So now we've got this text box that we can then manually adjust to get it to fit to the right up to the edges and drop it so it appears to be cutting in at the top and at the bottom. So this is a different effect to the Burger King one, but I just wanted to show what you can do with just some playing around and then we can have that working quite nicely. And then we can zoom out and see how that's looking. It's an interesting effect and that could work really nicely as a hero section because it doesn't matter where the text is cut off because we've got enough repetition there. What we could almost do with is some more words in the title. So a statement because it would just put the words at different spots behind it. 
But I think as an example, this is the type of thing we can do quite easily. Now we're going to go for gradient. And we're going to bring a linear gradient in from the left and the right. Okay, so this one doesn't allow us to change the color, but we can cheat a little bit. And go with the edit option. Then duotone. Doesn't matter which one we choose, because we're going to use the color from the graphic. And just to be on the safe side, I'll add it to both. And now we've got that gradient coming in from the left, and then the same for the right. And now we're going to rotate that and add it to the right hand side. Go into share, download, and this will be a PNG file because it's majority graphic as opposed to photo, although it could work as a JPEG. And I'm going to download just page one or current page. And whilst it's downloading that, let's go to the second one and let's download this one. But the slight difference is here, we're going to make it on transparent background and go to download page two. I should really name it, but I'm on a tight time frame with this video. So let's now go in, add in our hero section in Squarespace. So the first one, we can see this dividing line will work quite nicely with it. So let's go for, um, add a blank section. And if we go to edit section and go to background, now we can upload our file and we're going to upload the first option. And as we can see there, that's looking quite nice. One thing we can see is a little bit faded out. We don't need it to be like that. So what we can do is go to the background option and then remove any overlay opacity to keep the original. But if you had a sale ongoing, you could have the sale writing going behind it and then a product front and center. Okay. We could go for smarter and newer, like for example, the Logitech MX series mouse, which would look a bit sharper there on screen, but that's just showing how we can take a product and make it front and center on our website. Let's edit this section now, and we're going to add a divider, and it should memorize the divider effect used elsewhere. So we've got that slightly angled striped effect. Now let's add our second hero section. We're going to add a blank section once more. And this time we're not going to add a background other than the background color. So we're going to go with bright too. And now with this section, we're going to add a block and add an image block instead of a background. Double click on it to upload an image. And now our PNG, when it's fully loaded, should be on a transparent background. Okay. It's taking a sweet time, but it's got there. Because of this image cutting off on the left, it looks a bit strange with the mouse not cutting off to the left. So this is where we can use the alignment options on that image and bring it all the way over to the left hand side. Now we can go into edit section. We're going to remove the full screen option to make it more compact and give us control over how large we want this banner section. And also one other thing is just add the divider once more. So we've got that divider working in nicely there. What I'll do though, is I'll just move it below the section here. Well, in fact, what I'm going to do is move this one up, have that darker section in between, just we can see the separation with them. So this one here is looking huge with the mouse because it's a background image. It will proportionally scale. So we have to make the hero section deeper to make sure we get all of the mouse in the shot. Whilst with this one, we've got a tighter control and this mouse will fit over top of the background. So by just increasing the height, we can bring this in a couple more. There we are. We'll go with that. So now we can look at putting some text in behind this image. And we can do the same effect. Go with sale now on. So we'll go with a different effect. We're not going to go with as much writing on this one. Heading one. But what we're going to do now is use this text expansion option to fill the frame. And we can see already how big that text is going to be. And we're going to repeat it three times. 
Now this is a little bug in Squarespace. It tried to drag it over to the right. It's not giving me enough uh, space to move it. So I'm going to drag it to the right first. If it'll let me. It's been really fussy. There we go. And for some reason, it's much easier to drag it over to the left to snap full screen, or at least it used to be. So what I'm going to do is actually save it at this point. Now I'm going to copy that first row. Shift and enter to create a line break, because I don't want to create a paragraph break, so I want to keep it as the heading one throughout. In fact, this wouldn't be a heading one, it would be a heading two, because we're using it multiple times per page. For best practice, we should only use heading one right at the top once. It really doesn't want to play ball with bringing it out to the edge of the screen. Just wondering if I bring my browser window in and drag it off the edge. There we go. So what I need to do is just move the browser window across a little bit and then drag it off the left, off the edge of the browser, and that worked. Okay, so now we've got this. So I don't think the bold works because I've got it uploaded as a custom font. But I can now change the color of this text. And also, I can click off this text area somewhere else. Click on it once, and now we can move it to the back or behind the mouse there. So three rows is probably too much, but we can really start to play around with this now. You can take it right the way to the edge of this window here, and then once again off screen to the left. If I select this frame once, we can align it maybe to the bottom, just bringing it down a little bit. But that's two ways. I'd probably make this more compact. I wouldn't go for three lines in a row, but we've got two different ways now of getting text in behind our mouse. And in fact, we can go one step further as well, where we could go and add in a uh, scrolling text. And we can increase the text size of this. I think we can. Yeah, so we can bring the text size right up here. And then we can go into the, I believe it's the, the section settings here and edit the colors if we wanted to. So now we've got the option of scrolling text. And the best thing to do here would be to duplicate, to work on the section, duplicate it. And on this one here now, we could get rid of the background text block, make it more compact if we want to. And we could even change the colors of this section as well. So that's a bit of a bonus section. Of course, the text needs to go, the scroller needs to go behind the mouse. And I would definitely change that icon in between it. But that's a really cool effect that I hadn't even thought of when I started this video. And there we go. Bit of work to do on that one to get it to look as good as I wanted to. You can see the icon there. We're losing a little bit of effect there. Probably the text size is maybe one or two points too big. I definitely make this more compact, the whole section. And then bring that mouse across. But yeah, how about that? So section one, in fact, let's get rid of that second icon now. There we go, that's much better. So section design one, design two, if we get rid of that ticker and design three. So one and two in particular would need to be adapted for mobile. For this option where we put it all as one image, which is what we used to have to do with a lot of this, there's not much we can do with it on mobile view. But with these ones, we can work with them and get them to work exactly as we want on mobile design. And the same for this as well. It doesn't, it's not quite smart enough yet to remember all of our settings on desktop and think that we'd want the same layer in front above the other. But this mobile design feature in Squarespace is always improving. So I think that's something that you'll find going forward. Anyway, that's enough from me. 
Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.